Hello, good day. My name is Chris Njoku. Today, we'll be looking at VLOOKUP function for beginners. Yes, VLOOKUP function for beginners. I have this complaint from several of my students that VLOOKUP is difficult, VLOOKUP is confusing, and a whole lot of it. And then I decided to make a very simplified video of VLOOKUP for beginners. Yes, if you are a complete beginner, just make out time to watch this video over and over again. I bet you, you have a very strong understanding of VLOOKUP as you progress. And then after this video, I'm also going to make other videos that will gradually take you from one level to a higher level in VLOOKUP function. So please stay tight and watch this. Now, these are products. We have products 1 to 21. And then there is a description of all these products so that they'll have unique identification. Not just that product 1 is different from product 2 in number. There is also description of product 2 that is different from product 1. Say product 2, uh, let's say, um, is brand chopper, but product 1 is chef's knife. So that's just what the description is all about. Then another thing that talks about the uniqueness of this data is the unique price. Yes, I know sometimes, coincidentally, some products, uh, different products can just have same price, but it's also important for you to identify your product with um, unique price. Now, when I look at opening stock uh, of the product and then the value of each of these products, the value, as you know, should be um, unit price multiplied by the stock. That is what will give you the value. So, I have done that before now, so I don't want to go back to that. You can see C2 multiplied by D2. That's what gives you this. Same thing for this, C3 multiplied by D3. That will give you so now, now let's go into VLOOKUP in details. I want you to listen and listen to me very well so that you have a very strong understanding of VLOOKUP. In most cases, when you are organizing your data on a spreadsheet, you build your information from the left moving into the right. And that is also how it's applicable in several other uh, platforms. That's also how it's applicable in several other things you do. For example, if I ask you to describe yourself, and then I state out like four details I want to get from you. I need your age, I need your name, I need your date of birth, I need your location, these are details I've asked you to give me. If you give me those details and I want to enter these details into a spreadsheet, I'm going to start from your name. Yes, I'm going to start from your name. Before I'll not get to your age, I'll not get to your location and then any other details. Imagine if you gave me those details and then I started with location date of birth, age, and then I ended with name. It will not look nice. It will not look nice. In several forms that you feel, even if it's employment form or whatever form you're feeling, you see that people usually start with name. That is also how VLOOKUP function looks like. VLOOKUP function is organized in such a way that the details will move from left to right. Look at this now. We have product number. And then the next one will have the description of what this product number. And then the next one will have the unit price of this description of this product number. And then we'll have the opening stock and the value. Imagine if I start with value here. 
and then I bring my opening stock here, and then I bring um, my product description, I bring my uh, product number, and then unit price. It will not look nice. So I want you to have this understanding that that is how most data come. If you have that understanding, VLOOKUP will be very easy for you. Now, everything I've said, I want to summarize it in one statement. You look up from left to the right. You look up from left to the right. How? Let's go now. Let me give you a typical example. Let me call up the VLOOKUP function. So this is VLOOKUP. Now, these are four details of VLOOKUP. We have the lookup value, we have the table array, we have the column index number, and then range lookup. By the time I'm done with this first analysis, I'm going to explain this again and write it out so that you understand them better. So, lookup value is the very first question. Now, the question that you're being asked here now is what value do you want me to look up? Now, I want to answer by saying, yes, look up product 7 for me. So, I've gone to click on product 7, and product 7 is located on cell A8. So, you can see, it's showing A8 there. So, I bring in my comma sign to show that I'm done with lookup value. You can see the next item that is bold here is table underscore array. Now, where are you looking up product 7 from? We are looking up product 7 from this table. So this is the table. If you have not watched my um, video on how to create a table, please do that. So watch me and see what I want to do here. So I'm going to select the entire product, the product description, the unit price, and then the value, leaving only the headings. Selected it. So this is my table array. The next thing I'm going to do is my comma sign to show you that I am done with the table array. So the next is column index number. Column index number is asking you now, using product number, what do you intend to look up? Now, I could say I want to look up unit price or I want to look up product description of that uh, product 7 or I want to look up the value of that product 7 so that is what the column index number is trying to bring in like asking you now where do you want me to look up from what exactly do you need do you need the product description or you need the unit price of product 7 or you need the opening stock of product 7 or you need the value of product 7 so it's not left for you to say this is what i need so let's start with this assuming i need the product description of product 7 i will say column index number is 2 you ask me now why how did i come up with 2 now let me show you this is a column, the very first column, product number is column one. This is a column, product description, column two. This is a column, unit price, column three. This is a column, opening stock, column four. This is a column, value, column five. We said now that we want to look up the product description of product seven. And then product description is the second column in the series. And so your column index number is two. Comma. The last thing here that I say, choose from this as your range lookup. Are you looking for an approximate match or you look for an exact match? What we are looking at for is an exact match. So we'll go for force. We'll go click on it, exact match, and then we'll close the bracket. You can see it brought out product 7 as basics meat slicer. That's your seed. We have looked up product 7 description. Now, let me use another example to show us. Look at this now. Let me type product number. Hmm? 
So, and then we want to look up unit price. So, unit price. Okay. Now, using the VLOOKUP function, we want to pick, or rather, we want to select a product number and then look up the unit price of that product number. So that's a look up for you. So let's go with this. Let's say product 16. So let's type. Let's look at product 16. So product number, let's say product 16. So we can just type it in. Product System. Okay. Now, our main aim of doing is that we want to look up the price of product system without scanning our eyes through the unit price. Because you might be working with data that is as long as 200, 400, 900, and the rest. And then you don't want to make mistake because if you are trying to trace product 16, you might strain your eyes. So you use the VLOOKUP function. So now, we want to get the unit price for product system. So we we'll say equals VLOOKUP. So what is our lookup value? Our lookup value is what? Product 16. So we'll click on it. That's our lookup value. Our product 16 is on cell A17. So comma. The next thing is our table array. This is our table array. I'm also going to teach you something else. So I'll move forward. Come on. The next here now is column index number. Our target is the unit price. And so the unit price is on column one, two, three. Unit price is on column three. So the very last is our range lookup. And we're going for Fox, which is exact match. So double click on it and then we close and press enter. You can see it's showing us 1540 as a unit price of product 16. Let's go and check and be sure this is product 16. So we'll gradually move our cursor. You can see 1540. We can decide to change this again. Let's go for product 7. Product nine. Let's go for product nine as an example. Product nine. So here you can just quickly come to the formula bar and check and be sure that everything is aligned for unit price. If you run your script, you press your enter key from here, you will see what you are going to get. We change this to what product nine and product nine is on what cell a 10 so you just add a 10 you can see product nine a 10 so you drop your cursor anywhere and press your enter key you can see it changed to 5400 let's see product nine let's see where it goes 5400 so this is how it is. You can automate this system. Let's say you are going for product 19. So you come to the formula bar, just change to 19. The essence of doing that is so that anybody that's seen it will know what you have done. You first press your enter key to come out of there, and then you go to the unit price, which is what your target is, and then you quickly come to the formula bar and change to the product 19 cell representation so this is what you do your target is product 19 so you just quickly erase a little and then check product 19 product 19 is on what cell a 20 you can see this is 20 and this is column a so you just type 20 it's showing product 19 when you press your enter key Watch and see what happens. Now press your enter key and it's showing 1,800. 
Let's check product 19 to see if it's same thing. That's just it. Now we are done with unit price. Let's assume we want to do same thing, but for opening stock. So let me type opening stock here. Okay. Now, so let's go for opening stock and see what will come out of it. We say equals V lookup. Then what's our lookup value? We are still on product 19, so we we'll click on product 19. That's our lookup value, comma, our table array. We select all of it like this. Comma. The next is column index number. Where is our opening stock? Our opening stock is on column four. And it's one, two, three, four. So we'll put four there, comma, and then we have an uh, exact match. Is that we we'll close it? Look at what it gets to us. Opening stock is 77 for product 19. Let's check to be sure. This is product 19. Let's see, this is it. The opening stock is 77. Let's use same thing to obtain the value. So let's go value. Equals, so you look up. We're still on 19, so we'll click on it. Comma, our table array, select leaving just the heading. Comma, our intention is to get the value. The value is on the fifth column. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll put five. And then comma, we'll go with our force, is that much? And then we'll close, press that back. Look how it gave to us, it gave us 138,600. So let's go and check, so you see, this is it. So our value is 138,600. So we have been able to run through this to um, easily obtain Look up. However, before I end this video, I need to teach you something. It's on cell referencing. If you can make out time to check my video on cell referencing, you will have a good understanding of what I want to do. There are two different types of cell referencing. We have the absolute cell referencing, and then we also have the relative cell referencing. When you are working on VLOOKUP function in data analysis, what you do is that you ensure that you reference your column very well because the process you're doing could require automation. And so you don't want to be going over it, writing scripts every now and then. So the best thing you do is that you ensure that the cell referencing is perfect for the job you want to do. And then you ought to feel so that everything will be fine. So if you're doing VLOOKUP and then you need to reference cell, this is what you do. I want to click on a fresh cell and then do a VLOOKUP for another product. So let's say VLOOKUP. Now I want to look up product 12, comma. So, Next thing now is the table array. Let me select the table array and then tell you how to turn it to an absolute cell reference. So this is it. This is the table array. So if you want to make it an absolute cell reference, you bring in a dollar sign before the alphabet representing the cell and then before the number representing it. So we say dollar a, and then after that we say dollar two. So we have reference the upper limit, and then we need to reference the lower side of the column. So we also say dollar b, and then dollar twenty two. So we have done the reference limit. 
what we have done here is this. We put a dollar sign before A. A is the column alphabet. And then we put a dollar sign before 2. 2 is what? The row where you actually started the data from. You understand? So, going to the other limit, we say dollar $E, dollar $22. Yes. You started with E on this very last column. And to round it up, you selected the data up to E22. So, dollar before E, dollar before 22, which is this E22. This is E22, and this is what? A2. So, just understand the two um, areas that we worked upon. So, the next thing is column index number. Let's assume we want to check uh, product description or unit price. Let's go with unit price of product 12. So, we're looking at for the third column, one, two, three. So, we're looking at for third column, comma, and then our exact match, which is false. I'm going to close our bracket, close it. You can see we have 2,100 as the unit price of product 12. So, let's check this is product 12. Let's move. So, this is it, 2,100. So, this is just what you need to understand about the lookup function. In some of my videos that you see, I went straight to cell referencing and then I use absolute cell referencing. But here, because this video is meant for complete beginners that will gradually move into higher level of VLOOKUP, I decided to start with the relative cell referencing and then gradually brought in the absolute cell referencing. Uh, thank you very much watching subscribe to simplify youtube channel because several videos will be coming your way thank you